welcome to the Not Old, Better Podcast. See everyone, you have just been watching a video making the rounds about a new game. It's a phenomenon, actually. The game, Pokemon Go, literally has everyone off the couch, out of their seats, and playing this game. And, and I'm talking everyone. We'll get to the game in just a second, but this new Pokemon Go game from Nintendo has finally figured out how to get us to move, and that's big for our generation. But because our generation of 50-plus individuals uh, aren't so savvy about Pokemon Go, we're going to spend a little time telling you exactly what it's all about. Let's start with the business, though. From purely a business standpoint, Nintendo shares have been on a tear since the Japanese company released its newest game, Pokemon Go, last week on Thursday. The stock surged nearly 25%. The stock has jumped again today, 9%. And the company's market cap has increased to eight, by $8 billion. On Friday, Pokemon Go had already been downloaded a million times on Apple and Android devices. The new smartphone game has players exploring your real-life neighborhoods, and it uses augmented reality by tapping your phone's camera to superimpose cute virtual creatures in the real world so that you can see them right there on screen. Uh, and this weekend, you might have noticed some people, more people than usual, including me, uh, wandering around staring at uh, my phone. Uh, to the untrained eye, it might have just looked like uh, it was just a bunch of tourists out descending upon your town trying to figure out the ne next digital location. But we were actually playing the Pokemon Go game. And uh, those of us playing, we can tell you uh, it, it is a lot of fun. However, uh, there's another side to it. It's already caused uh, some skateboard spills because people are playing it on the go. It led a girl to find a dead body uh, and some not so clever teens uh, allegedly even used it to lure uh, victims uh, to rob them. But on the plus side, technically it's a free to play location based augmented reality game and it supports its own custom wearable tech and we'll talk about that in, in just a second. We all remember Pokemon, right? We remember the color Game Boy. Uh, we remember uh, the Game Boy itself and how much fun they were. And um, it basically has, Pokemon Go basically has roughly the same principles as every other Pokemon from the past 20 years. Um, you look for critters, you catch them, you train them, you battle with them. What's different here is that it uses the real world to inform your game experience. The game uses your phone's GPS to track where you are and to make use of a kind of stylized Google map as the primary game board. Your character moves in the game as you walk around in real life and events and objects known as Poke stops are associated with specific locations in the physical world. In order to interact with them, you need to actually walk to a particular place, like in the real world. You can look at the game world through your phone's display, which serves as a viewfinder that mixes reality uh, with the game objects, and that's where the term comes from, augmented reality. So how does this actually kind of play out? Well, for starters, Pokemon Go comes with no instruction manual. Don't look for one. It's not there unless you go to Google. 
But the idea is to rely on your intuition. Many of us remember the Pokemon creatures and how fun it is to figure out just how to catch them all. Um, the Pokemon will show up at, uh, at random, uh, but you'll have to compete with any other players for them. You may also no notice that certain Pokemon cluster in certain spots. For example, the fire Pokemon tend to be around gas stations. The grass Pokemon tend to be in parks. The ghost Pokemon really are only coming out after dark, though law enforcement recommends that uh, you stick to daylight hours. The more Pokemon that you catch, the more points you score as a trainer. I have uh, 1,410 points. I need 590 more for the next level, and I have to catch more. <laughs> I have to be out there. You can also uh, rack up points uh, and free items at the Pokestops, or when you involve, evolve your Pokemon. Once you've accumulated enough experience points to reach level 5, you can actually train your Pokemon at the nearest gym marked by this kind of wacky-looking laser tower on the, on the map. The gym will usually be found near a local landmark where most people see a pack of weirdos circling a statue and thumbing uh, at their phones. You will see a path to glory. So you may be asking, what is this wearable tech? Well, walking around all day, staring down at your phone may be something you're used to doing anyway, but it's not necessarily the safest option if you're walking around a busy city. Don't worry, though. Your phone will vibrate uh, whenever there is a Pokemon near you, so you won't miss anything important. If you want to wear something, this wearable tech, that looks like a kid's Pokeball watch, you can see from uh, the, the picture that um, there are two types of clips, one that can be worn on the wrist, one that can be worn in a, in a picture, and those are available, uh, I think, any just about any day now from uh, the Pokemon site. Uh, for about $35, and um, they connect uh, via Bluetooth with your phone, and uh, they vibrate as a Pokemon is near. So the idea for the game, of course, was conceived in uh, 2013 by the CEO of Nintendo, and it was really first established uh, as kind of a, an April Fool's Day collaboration with Google called the Pokemon Challenge. You may remember some of that. Revealed with a slick trailer that's been viewed over 17 million times, the joke launched this fake competition to find 150 Pokemon hidden in real-world locations. The trailer showed participants holding up their phones to reveal the creatures through the device's camera. Little did we know at that time that that would be the premise for the real-world game that was just launched last week. So how did it become so huge so fast? Other than just the game uh, was uh, originally supposed to be rolled out around the world starting in Australia on July 6th and then finding its way through North America before moving west to Europe and finally Asia, things didn't quite go according to plan. By the time the game was uh, turned on in North America, demand was so high that it made the game servers grind to a halt, causing all kinds of problems. The game debuted at number one on both iPhone and Android, and there are so many people trying to play it that the system struggles, and I've had that happen to me. Lots of players found that they couldn't log in, or if they did, uh, the game would freeze and crash. As a result, the global rollout was paused while things were fixed, which is uh, set for this week. And this is just the first iteration. You will see more to come. I predict much more in the way of technology and uh, enjoyable, fun things to do from a cross-generational standpoint. And that's it from us. So go outside, play with each other, and play with this new game, Pokemon Go. It's a lot of fun, and join us again soon for another uh, great segment on some of the great topics. Thanks very much.